okay i don't know if anybody is going to find me um because we've been to in and fro in left right and center today trying to get this to work and i think we finally got it sorted now you might wonder why i've got a strange box here and that is because i have a guest you can close it i have a guest <laughs> Um, and it's my daughter and because she is only 10 we're going to obscure her face but you're going to get her voice and you that's her hand waving so my hands are here and this is my daughter's hands so do you want to say hello hello <laughs> so um part of winging it is all about helping people to learn new skills and i'd be sort of failing in my duty if I wasn't also doing that for my daughter so we're gonna start just before just while people are finding us and um, getting online please if you do find us and tune in just drop a message in the chat I've got my chat open so I'll be able to see and it will help me uh, see if I need to interact with people or not if not we're just going to do this as live because it's been um it's been a bit of a nightmare today it's been very very stressful trying to get this to work we're just going to film it and um it will be there for you to watch later but um i'm hoping that some people find us along the way so uh, i thought we'd start by just showing you some of my daughter's called zoe by the way um I thought we'd just show you some of the things that she's done now i don't want for a minute for you to think that she's sewing all the time we just sort of pick it up and let it go and uh, she she sews when she feels like it and i don't want it to become a chore for for her so um over the last year she's done bits and bobs so why don't you um show people what you were doing so last year I did Anne Brooks um, 52 Tags Challenge and uh, <laughs> Zoe was joining in with me and she only did a few but um, do you want to talk about what you did? So do you remember what the prompt was for this one? That one was hearts and I really enjoyed that one. I found loads of bits and bobs. So we did some of PK and there's bits of ribbon and things like that and just simple stitches and don't show that one yet let's <laughs> let's do them in order so that was your first one wasn't it what was that one do you remember the prompt for that one wasn't it white yeah all white so you have to speak loudly because okay. the microphone's a bit further away <laughs> um i also really like that one because i like just adding random things on the felt and oh. sewing them on so what have you got there i've got some lace here, um, some buttons and sequins. You've got mesh there. Do you remember what that was that we cut up? I don't know if you can. Isn't it like um, fishnet? It is a bit like fishnet. It's a laundry bag that we thought it was a nice texture, so we cut it up. And what are these bits? Sequins there. Yeah. And some buttons. Okay. So what what came next? This was your, do you remember what the prompt was for that one? Uh, Hello Ray, so glad you found us, I'm, I'm so glad that there's somebody there. <laughs> how are you? Let me know in the chat how you're doing. It's been great watching all of your um, post your prompts because they are so lovely. Um, so thank you for sticking with us and uh, keeping going with the project. Go on, what was this what was the prompt for that one? Do you I remember? I cannot remember that. It was scrappy. So do you remember how you did it? Uh, I think like so you got a rectangle of fabric and then you folded it and then you sewed the middle onto it, yeah. onto a background piece of felt and you kept on doing it inside each other. So you did it inside the fold, yeah. didn't you? And, and then, then you scratched it to make it a bit rough. Yeah, so it all frayed when you Yeah. We roughed it up a little bit and you stuck with red and white there. Yeah. Go on then. This is my favourite one next. I think it's great. So this one, do you remember the stitch that yes, you were using? It was fly stitch. It was fly stitch. So um, Zoe wanted to do something in a really creative way and I thought this was brilliant. 
So she did lots of fly stitches at the top for the leaves and then put um, different co colours uh, fly stitches to show like the brightness of the carrots. Yeah. Um, and I did them uh, in the shape of a carrot. So. Yeah, so you took them inside each other, didn't you? Yeah. And this is quite topical because fly stitch is part of our March stitch group. So hopefully you'll have some fun with fly stitch as we go through March. Hello, Connie. Um, I'm so glad. I, <laughs> I hope if this is your first live, I hope it's not a disappointment. <laughs> so, um, you're very welcome. So glad you've joined us. Right. So what else did you like about this this tag? Um. I like how you could do anything but with it, but then it's restricted to one stitch, but you're able to do anything. Yeah, it's brilliant, and you put some little worms in there, didn't you? Yeah, and some French knots to be like stones on the yeah. ground. I absolutely loved this one. I thought it was brilliant. Um, I I'm just thinking, Connie. Um, you've just said good morning. That tells me that you're not in the UK. So if you're happy to, you can just give a nation. Um, let me know where you're tuning in from. And uh, <laughs> that'd be good to know. So this one here, if you want to... Actually, if I switch camera, you'll be able to see it much better. We're looking at it in a tiny little um, window there. I This one was... Uh, a mini landscape yeah um and i sort of went on the kind of thing that you're doing where you did like different seasons in hoops so i sort of did summer or spring um and i did a tree down the uh, down the left side and do you remember what these stitches are no <laughs> so these are detached chains so these are another this is another stitch that we're gonna look at in march so we've got some detached chain stitches there to make leaves um, on the tree. And, and then for the flowers I did some like easy straight stitch and then put a French knot or a few French knots on top of them to make little flowers. So that's uh, some really nice stitch in there. Do you want to show everybody what your most recent project is? Now this, so we didn't... Um, Hi, from Colorado, fantastic. So we've gone international. <laughs> That's great. I'm so glad you found us too, Connie. You're very welcome joining in. Um, do uh, follow the hashtags as well if you're on Instagram so that you can see everybody else's work. So, yeah, so we didn't sew anything for quite a while, did you? And then tell us what you were doing at school first before you do the big reveal. I was doing ancient mines and it they're sort of like Aztec and they're really interesting. So you had to do a project about chocolate didn't you? Yeah. And so one day I was doing some sewing and she came home and decided she wanted to sew something so do you want to reveal your hoop that you made? I decided to make an ancient Mayan temple. So this was completely um so his own design and I just sort of gave her a bit of a steer so do you remember what this technique was called trapezium no <laughs> almost <laughs> trapunto trapunto brilliant go. so um this was uh, a bit of trapunto she wanted the you wanted the steps to stand out didn't you yeah so I suggested um doing this technique and stuffing and things. So you made this a, a good few yeah. weeks ago now, I didn't sort of, you? I, start, I wanted to stuff it to like outline the steps and then uh, and then you sort of said that I just did, did a new thing and I was like, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got some straight stitches at the top here for a bit yeah. of contrast and you did a bit of sort of seed stitch, didn't you? Yeah. To make it textured brickwork. And then invented a way of doing lettering. Yeah. <laughs> so that was good. So that's, that's Zoe's most recent work. And I think, does it, does you tell me, does it help you that I don't nag you to sew all the time? Yeah, if you did, I wouldn't really be sewing all the time. 
anytime soon. So, uh, uh, how often do I sew? Uh, twenty four seven. <laughs> I'm always sewing. So, um, Zoe just sees me sewing, and sometimes she feels inspired, and sometimes she doesn't, and that's okay, isn't it? So, yeah. um, do you enjoy it though when you do it? Yeah, it depends what I'm doing. Sometimes if it's like something that I didn't come up with, I'm not that fond of it because I mean, I don't know why. I just don't really want to. But then if I come up with it, I'm sort of stuck into it, and I really want to finish it. And with this, I re I was like desperate to show my craft, and I also brought in in a picture of a mind button that I drew as well, and they really like it so so when you're being creative what's your go-to what's the most what's what do you do the most to be creative i mostly i listen to music and then from the music something pops into my head and then i start drawing so yeah it's drawing mostly isn't yeah. it so um but you're you are quite a creative person aren't you so she she likes being creative it clearly runs in the family so connie's saying that she's really impressed with your sewing look at that Ooh. you can press somebody in colorado That's <laughs> i don't even know where that is my geography is awful i think colorado <laughs> is um left of center of america but you might have to correct me um so it's over towards the west i think um, definitely in the USA. Yeah, definitely. So today I thought we would um, work on our slow stitch and uh, we ought to get on with some sewing really, I suppose, rather than just chit-chatting. So Zoe's going to learn along with us. And um, I'm working on this turquoise panel. You probably could have guessed that I was going to work on turquoise because of my nails. Um, and... I thought we would have a bit of a play with English paper piecing. So I have got some shorts on this and on my Instagram I've got um, a three minute video somewhere on my grid of, um, I think you can go to the videos tab and um, find it immediately. Um, oh, I'm correct about the location of Colorado, it's where the Rocky Mountains are. I want to go there now. I know, so do I. We've got <laughs> dreams of touring around America. Because Zoe's dad, um, Mr Featherstitch, uh, did a tour of America when he was about 20 and has been to all these amazing places that we haven't ever been to. So we're quite keen to go. I do love a mountain. I'd rather be around mountains than around a beach, if I'm allowed to say that. I do really want to go to the, like, the American Art Festival in florida yeah yeah at disney yeah. yeah so one day we'll be able to do it when uh, covid isn't such an issue so um we're gonna learn some english paper piecing and i because i was so busy chatting last time <laughs> um i hardly got anything done so i have done a bit of work so i just want to show you where we're heading i'm making um a mini dresden plate so a dresden plate is a circular pieced pattern and then I've already got a teeny tiny Suffolk puff or yo-yo oh I think um, people in America call them that's going to go in the middle and cover up all of the mess in the middle so I've got some of it done ahead of time but I thought I'd just show you Zoe's going to learn she's done two pieces already just to have a bit of a practice um, I thought I'd just show you how to do it so if you if you do go onto my Instagram and choose the video tab um, on my grid, you should find a three minute video that's all about um, paper piecing, but you get a longer version today. So what you need for this is some cotton, lightweight cotton. And just as a warning, this is really thin cotton and if you look it's it has got a bit of a pattern on it you might not be able to pick it up very well um on it's the camera yeah but you do need sort of quilting weight cotton fairly light cotton otherwise it gets really bulky and you might struggle to form the shapes that you need so i've got uh, a hexagon just to 
demonstrate. So you've got your hexagon, haven't you? Yeah. Do you remember what the first stage was? Uh, so I think you you put the hexagon on a piece of fabric you that do. you're using, and then you get scissors and you cut around it, and but you're leaving like a half a centimetre edge on it. Yeah, so uh, half a centimetre or about a quarter of an inch if you're in old money. So we're going to just cut around our shape. Now you can do this very precisely and you can get um, you can get templates to do this. You can also buy hexagons ready made, ready cut for you. Some people don't like this because um, you have to do double the cutting but I find it really therapeutic. I find it a, a, a deeply therapeutic thing to do. It's a satisfying so. sound to cotton too. It is. That's not felt though. That's cotton. cotton. <laughs> so, do you remember what I said to do to make it a bit easier and stop the template moving? You, like, you sew a cross in the middle yeah. with template. So, yeah, you can use spray-on um, like basting glue, quilting glue that sprays on it holds your fabric in place um, temporarily and you'll notice that I've got a bright red thread here so I'm sewing with bright red but I'm just wondering where your needle is. <laughs> is that an okay shape? Or have I done it too no, small? No that's okay you, it, it, it's a little bit small but you might be able to manage right so you need some red thread doesn't have to be red. I just like to use a colour that's very different to the fabric that you're working on because you want to be able to find these stitches afterwards. Because you unpick them. Yeah, and you're going to unpick them. So all I'm going to do, and I'm going to keep my knots on the right side of my fabric as well um, to make it easier to remove these stitches. So all I'm going to do is hold in my paper in place I'm going to sew across now obviously this hexagon is not part of my Dresden plate I'll show you how to do that in a second and show you the principles of English paper piecing okay so I'm just going to do a chunky cross and I'm stitching through the fabric and through the paper as well so my knot is on the right side there and I've just stitched across through and that's purely just a holding stitch because I don't want my paper to move around. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Threading a needle is the worst part. Okay. Are we there? Yeah. Do you want to do my white one and I'll do your green one? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there's, there's more border on mine. Okay. So, let's cut across. Crikey, is this a test? Huh? Have you done this to test me with the tiny borders? No. <laughs> can I say how to do it? Or? Yeah, you can. Okay. Speak up though, so the microphone can pick you up. Yep. <laughs> so, the, f the second step is to fold one side over. And make it as close to the paper as you can, but without folding the paper. Okay, so we're going to fold it over and we're going to finger press it, yep. aren't just we? Just use your thumb. So use your thumb to just press it nicely down to the paper. And then what are we going to do? Where then do we start? You come, don't you come up from the back? Yeah, so you come up from the right side in the middle of your side right. and your shape. You don't want to come up in the corner because um, you don't want to lose this stitch. We're going to pleat the corners. And we're just going to put some tacking stitches or basting uh, stitches to hold our fabric in shape around the paper. So the paper is a former, really. It's going to form the shape that we're trying to make. And um, it will come out at the end. We're going to remove it at the end okay so and then you fold the side next to it so we just put one little tacking stitch in the middle there and we're 
going round, we're turning our piece clockwise, aren't we? Yep. And then we're going to fold over the next edge and make a sort of pleat in the corner. So you sew over the corner yep. just so it stays down. Yeah, so we're going to sew across the pleat. When did you learn to do this? This morning at 11. Okay, so just a couple of hours ago, Zoe did this for the first time and now she's teaching the internet. <laughs> it sort of scared me a bit. So then we just keep working our way round. <coughs> Don't we? Tacking along and then turning and folding the next side over. It doesn't have to be especially neat because you're going to cut them out anyway. Yeah, these stitches it doesn't matter about, does it? It does matter if your edges and corners are neat, doesn't it? Because, I mean, if you're doing hexagons like mine, you have to make them into lots yeah. if you're doing that kind of thing. And yeah, they have to be neat if that's happening. Yeah, you want them to fit together, but I would argue that this is one of the most forgiving ways of doing patchwork. Um, it allows, there's quite a lot of margin for error on this because um, the magic happens when you join shapes together. Yeah. So we're just carrying on. I'm going to go a bit quicker. Don't you rush. You can go at whatever speed My you like. My needle keeps going to unthread it. It's so annoying. Yeah. On the one that I did earlier, I made a complete mess on the front and I did a loop knot on it yeah. by accident. So we don't like we don't matter. like noose knots, do we? When the thread just knots itself, just tangles itself around. Um, that happened to you a few days ago, and the whole thread wrapped around itself. Yeah, it happens to me all the time. I just edit it out on videos. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. So let me know if you're stitching along with us or whether you're just watching for the fun and then are going to stitch later. And do feel free to ask me to repeat anything or ask any questions. If you want to ask Zoe any questions, you can. We're all open to questions. Don't expect to have the best answers though. <laughs> you were really disappointed when you thought we couldn't do this, weren't you? Yeah. Um, we just could not get our, our stream to go, could we? It just it kept, kept buffering you. and it was the just. The sound wouldn't come through like after five minutes. It was minutes. terrible. And, and I kept on racing up and down the house to try and deliver messages because we were both in different rooms. So I was Googling away, trying to find what the problem was and managed to find something that gave me a fix. And lo and behold, here we are. So it does mean that some of the people that might have joined us aren't here, but hopefully everybody will find us later. So... Um, I've got back to the beginning now and so I'm just going to knot off the thread I might need it. and cut it off and that's my first little hexy. I'm just checking my chat box. No, I don't think... Oh wait, no, something... A few comments have come through. Watching and enjoying. <laughs> Um, I'm so glad that you're enjoying hand stitching again because I, I do, I, my sewing machine is just off to the right and I, I do love machine sewing but so easy. there's something just so mindful and restful about hand sewing and I just love how tactile it is and how, you know, you, the, I don't know, all those textures that that pass through your hands, it's just absolutely lovely. Ray, that's very kind of you to say. Um, I do appreciate. 
your comments there. What did right. she say? It's right there. Oh. She found her, re found her love of hand stitching. Oh, because her thing didn't. So there we go. So I'm just going to repeat the process and do a second Etsy. So I'm just knocking off them. Yeah. Um, Have you told the paper cuts to do? Just a tiny bit. Right, so there's your. Well, I've chopped a bit off, but I didn't want it to chop off there. There's your minty one. Okay. I was like, I was really excited to do something on YouTube for the first time because in my room I'm always pretending that I'm on YouTube. Because I just adore the idea of being on the internet. It was great during lockdown because your teacher set you projects, didn't didn't mm -hmm. he? And you did one of them as a video. Yeah. So um, he would set like invention projects to do just in the first lockdown. And, um, and so Zoe did some videos that she uploaded to Google Classroom. And it it meant that you got to feel like a YouTuber for a, a moment or two, mm, yeah. didn't you? So that was good fun. And, and then went off the video. I really liked it, so I started using your computer and I tried to record something on a game. It didn't go too well, but it did work. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Mm. I, I'm not really that great in front of an audience, but um, I mean, you don't one of the like no I don't but one of the um, one of the benefits of, of doing even live streams is that I can't see anybody <laughs> who's watching so I can just pretend I'm talking to myself which I do most of the time anyway <laughs> and when I'm recording the videos I'm generally here on my own so I've because I've cut a bit off this that I didn't mean to cut off um, this is a really funny shaped piece of fabric that I'm working with here. So, so thanks to you, I have my mint green hexagon. So why don't you demonstrate what happens next while I'm just doing this? Okay. So on here, I join them together with some whip sticks where you well, show it okay so what I do you do know. with what are you going to do with that mint hexagon i'm going to join it on to these two okay you get in my partner oh, i'm having a nightmare with this one I might have to come off camera to do this because I've made the right pig's ear with this. <laughs> <laughs> pig's ear? Yeah. <laughs> well, how, uh, how do you describe something as that? Well, you know, it's all floppity and whatever. Oh, then it's a dog, dog's tail. Dog's then. breakfast. No, it's a dog's tail because they're floppity. Or a, or a wet dog. There you go. So... Whip stitch is, I'm going to use whip stitch to join them together. So, so how do you hold them to be able to do it? Do you remember? Three. Okay, so you're going to, which side do you want to sew first? That one. This one, okay. So you're going to hold them right sides oh, together. Oh, yeah. And you'd be better off turning it that way. Okay, so line mm -hmm. them up. Line them up the best way that you think they work. Make sure you're on camera. And I'm going, you have to make sure it's always facing the side that you're going through. And with whip stitch, you always go through one side. So, so you always go through the yeah. same direction. I'm, I'm just going to quietly abandon this one <laughs> because I've cut my, <laughs> cut my fabric in such a strange way. It's not going to work. So start on the right because you're right handed. Yeah. And, and you're going to go in. You right go in at the very edge of yourself. So right in through the corner. You want to try and avoid touching the paper with the needle. You can sort of feel it. 
yeah you'll be able to feel with your needle what's loose fabric and what's paper do you want me to start you off and my knot is too small <laughs> um uh it's okay if you touch the paper but it's not great if you do so. no because you you want to be able to remove the paper so shall i start you off but so helpful we... paper tears so it, you can just touch it can't yeah. you just pull it out so we're going to go in right at the corner there and then just bring the thread over the top and go back in from the front in exactly the same direction yep and we're going to keep our stitches fairly close together and just work our way along and hopefully you can see i've just got the tiniest tiniest oh sorry <laughs> the tiniest tiniest bit of fabric that i've caught in there so just leave it it's fine just right so you um keep going with that and i'm gonna come over here and show you my dresden plate so you can get templates for the dresden plate i've done a cheats version so i basically just printed out a circle on my computer and i've put in some lines and if you put in a straight line first, let me do that away from the microphone because it's gonna. Gosh, that is noisy. What paper have you used? This is recycled paper. Out of plastic bottles? No, just oh. out of paper. Okay. So I've just printed out a circle and I put in a vertical line and then I copied and pasted the line. And if you right click, on it i'm talking windows 10 here uh zoe is 10 connie that's <laughs> i just noticed your um your question there so if you right click you can uh, format shape and you can change the rotation and so when i copied the line so i started with the vertical and when i copied it i rotated it 30 degrees So if you rotate 30 degrees, that will give you a line here. And you just, um, you just keep adding 30 degrees. So this one's rotated 60 degrees and 90 degrees. So I basically just put in a 30 degree rotation will give you 12 segments in total. And so I've just printed that out. A re uh, if you aren't computer savvy... Um, you can just do it with a circle. So if I just put it on top of this felt so you can see it better. If you fold it in half, you don't even have to worry about the lines. So fold it in half, fold it in quarters. And then you want to fold this into three. So you can make them line up as long as they all fit together if you just fold so that the lines match up like that you will have 12 sections on your circle so I folded one one way and one the other and I've just maneuvered them until they all line up and then um, I'm just gonna cut a curve you can leave them just like that but I'm just gonna take the corners off so that it it looks like a sort of flower petal shape and this is how I've got them really small so then you just cut those out so cut along the fold lines and you've got your dress and plate wedges so I've now lost my dress and plate wedge where is it? it's oh. right there isn't it? no I've got some spares. Right, how are you doing? Why don't um, you? Okay, I've yeah. finished sewing these two together, so I'm going to start on the other side. And from what I've understood, understood. I understood. Okay, uh, I'm just going to fold those over like that, if you can see. Yep. And then start sewing on my right hand. Like that. Okay. 
Okay, so you just carry on witch stitching all the way along. Mm -hmm. So my um, dress and plate wedges have completely disappeared. I just can't for the life of me work out what's happened to them. For uh, Connie's question, how old I am, to be honest, if you saw me, I don't think you'd expect I'm 10. I don't think I look 10. She's, uh, she's hugely tall. One of the tallest people in your class, aren't you? I, yes, I'm nearly as tall as my dad, I think. So, right, so that's, that's basically the beginnings of my dressing plate. So I have got, got 12 of these wedge shapes. And you can obviously, I'm working very small because I want it to fit on my 8x8 panel. But working small makes it harder, as we discovered earlier, didn't we? Yep. Oh, I just poked myself. Oh, careful. Um, so, the principle is exactly the same when you're working um, with different shapes. So you don't have to work in hexagons. So... Um, the principle is identical. Where are my orange scissors? Okay. Got them open. So I'm going to cut around my wedge. I'm going to square off the end because otherwise I'm going to end up with a stitch that folds in the wrong direction. And just trim around my dress and plate wedge. And if I start on a straight edge rather than the curve, it makes life a lot easier. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm squinting to see a screen. So I'm, I've mostly worked in red, but I've unthreaded my red at the moment. No, I gave you my red needle, didn't I? Yeah. So I'm just going to work in white. That. So again, I'm just going to fold my fabric over my paper and then when I get to my curved edge I'm just gonna do it bit by bit and pleat my way around so I'm just gonna add in more pleats so similar to what we did at the corner of the hexagons but this time I'm gonna pleat as I go around and because it's so small I might only need one or two little pleats um, but I'm going to work my way around while you're doing that I have finished my three hexagons so it looks like that really nice um, that's very good so when you're sewing them together whatever is happening with the shape of your hexagon because you sew them together the the um the seam will just pull into shape and so you always get perfect joins at the center which sometimes i think with machine quilting when you're making blocks those meeting points of your different uh, fabric pieces can often be quite troublesome so with English paper piecing, it always corrects itself. It's always perfect. So uh, that's really neat. Fab. Right, you're going to have to do some magic for me with the light because it's starting to get dark. Am I? And uh, I need you to turn the light on so that we can plug the iron in because we're going to need the okay. iron next. And I'm just going to simply just do like maybe a couple or maybe three uh, knots because it is such thin material the knot can just slip through so yeah. I'm just trying decent secure knot as you were saying earlier small makes it really difficult because I was doing it on a small hexagon and it looked like a misshapen circle yeah it didn't turn out very well did it we, were, we no. had a practice to see what would work best 
so Zoe's just working on a on a larger scale. I think it look it looks better because you can use more fabric and you see more of the hair pattern. I'm just gonna I go agree. get that misshapen circle. Can you do the lines for me? Yeah. What are you looking for? The misshapen. Oh no, don't worry about that. So right down to my point. And I'm just going to put a stitch in there to hold the folded fabric in place and then I'm going to work back up to my starting point. And it looks fairly ropey from the back, but when I turn it over, you should see that um, it's much neater, she says. Um, it's a much better shape on the front. So um, it, I tend to work where I, I make all my pieces and then I sew them together but I wanted to keep a couple of pieces loose so that I could show you what to do with them so same applies with this once you've got your pieces so he's working on another hexagon now leave yourself enough of margin um, so I'm going to sit them together and with these I'm just going to make sure that the the corner where the curve begins matches up on both because it doesn't really matter what's happening down here it's going to be covered up so this end I don't need to worry so much about this end I do I need to make sure it's as it should be so I'm lining up those corners at the very outside edge and I'm just going to whip stitch along long edge to put my two pieces together i've just noticed you know how like to hold it hold the fabric and the paper together you do a cross yeah when you're cutting it out you could do the cross before you cut it out just so it doesn't keep on yeah, moving around you could do that i think that's a good idea because so. i think i've got a too small a border so yeah, you can just stitch your fabric to your paper piece or pin it before you cut your shape out and that way your paper doesn't move. It's like, go big or go home. <laughs> uh, put enough fabric on or don't. <laughs> but if you don't, you're going to have a troublesome time. I stitched all the way down to my point and one of the things that I really love about the Dresden plate is that because they all meet at that narrow end every other piece you don't have to restart your thread so I'm just going to put my next shape on and again I'm lining up at this end I'm not worrying too much about what's happening down here and I'm just going to stitch along I'm going to be short one because I've put them somewhere and I can't remember where I've put them I'll move, blue one I'll, I'll move something and then it will turn up but then that will be after the video and that will just yeah. be annoying bit. So hope everyone's having a good Sunday. We it's it has been very stressful here, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> but on the on the yacht, it's a beautiful sunny day, and we weren't really expecting it to be sunny today. We thought yesterday was going to be better weather, mm. and it's cold, isn't it? It's it's properly cold. My yeah. hands are cold in here. This is not the warmest room in the house. So this is my um, feather stitch studio so you'll be able to see behind me now we've turned the light on you can see all my uh, felt stacked up on the shelf in a rainbow because I can't cope if it's in a funny order 
um, and we've got all our kits boxed up as well so we've got we've currently got I'm gonna say six kits it might be seven is it seven well one two three four five six no it's seven seven kits um that are available on our website um, and we've got five downloadable patterns as well and we're about to launch our new series so some of the work that I do is just embroidery art and I just do it for fun because I like experimenting and I like sewing and I like being creative so my current series that I'm working on just for fun is my planet series last year I did landscapes so I did um, I did some wide view landscapes and some woodland landscapes they're all on my instagram grid if you want to have a look why don't you take down your favorite one and you can bring it in before i do that there oh. is a slight problem i ran out of felt there's a table in front of the felt box <laughs> so i can't get any more felt and that's not felt that's cotton i keep on doing that sorry <laughs> um and don't know what to do about that because uh, that's too small. Okay, that's all right. We can fix that later. So, my favorite. yeah. So can I get my favorite too. No, just get just get one and I'll take it down. Right. To preserve the air of mystery. <laughs> so you can have a look on my grid. Um, that's an absolute pleasure, Ray. <laughs> oh, you can watch the rest later. So this was one of my woodland hoops. So this was an autumn woodland. Do you want to bring that in? Too high. <laughs> Sorry. Down, 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 <laughs> down, down. So that's my autumn woodland that I did. And I've got one for each season. And you can see them all. I um, really like this one because it's got tiny mushrooms <laughs> along the edge. Just there. They were a lot of fun to do. Um, there's tiny little, like, I'm going to guess there are acorns around. Just uh, lying leaves on the and floor. things, yeah. And then you did like a flappy bit here on a tree that kind the of... The bracket fungus. Yeah, and it's just, it's just really, really pretty. And I like the fact how it's so detailed. I think you spend like, like two or three days on yeah, it. Yeah, it took me a, about a week to put it all together and yeah. finish it off. The tree trunks are amazing as well. So that was last year. This year I'm doing um, looking through a telescope and looking through a microscope. So I'm doing a solar system series and I've done the first two. So we've got Mercury and Venus. They're available to see on my Instagram as well. So, so this one's Mercury and that one's Venus. And it's just sort of free stitch and um just a bit of th these are using up scrap fabric so you might be able to see that underneath the embroidery is just scrap fabrics from that's waste from other projects so i i use that as a as a layer and i look at the contrasts and um colors and tones and use fabrics to make a sort of patchwork background and then overstitch to create the dynamics of it um, um, so that's just for fun, but then I'm about not the blue one, not the blue one. Not the blue one. Uh, um, so I'm also about to release a series of gemstone hoops. So these are based around birthstones. So we've got garnet and amethyst, and these are going to be available yeah. hopefully by the end of next week. I really like these because you've actually put the like. So on this one, you've done an amethyst, but then you've actually put amethyst, like little tiny amethyst beads with holes in them yeah. on on an amethyst project. Yeah. And it, it's sort of, it's funny, but then it also adds something. Yeah. So they feature the actual stone, the chips of the stone. So they are about to be released. We're just waiting on instruction booklets to arrive and then they will be released so you can check out our kits on our website if you want to and our downloads are their instant downloads so you can get those as well but winking it is just uh, a free fun project 
just to get people stitching and having fun. And Mine. the idea is that we do it together. Yeah. So that's that's why we do try. I'm trying to do a live stream once a month because I like the community feel. And I think probably if um, we hadn't had such technical difficulties, we would have had quite a lot more people um tuning in today but it is what it is and uh, we're just doing the best we can well won't it still be on youtube forever so yeah people it will, will people will find it, it so. so that's my dress and plate with one missing but it doesn't matter i can show you anyway right could you plug the iron in for me yeah. we've got a limited number of sockets so we have to keep going backwards and forwards forward that comes from right off there yeah so. i know so It'll be all right. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. Yeah, okay. Uh, with your ring in it thing, I think it was like modified. Yeah. And on my ancient Mayan temple, I did it black, white, and grey. So it was sort of linked to ring in it. Cause yep. I sort of wanted to join in. So, I will put in my final wedge later, so you get a sense of what it's going to look like. I, I, I'd just love to know what on earth I've done with my other wedge. I have everything set up, yeah. and then I've moved it, and got no idea where it's gone now. I don't know what I'm going to do about that, because <laughs> it's too small. It's alright, we'll find you another piece. You could just right, do that so and put can smaller you... one. Pass me my iron and my, um, well, there's that one as well, and my ironing mat from down there. But it there. has iron. It's and all right. it's the wrong colour. Ironing mat? Did I put it down there? No, no I, put it over I gave here. it to you earlier. Sorry, <laughs> put it over here. Right, so what we're going to do is set these shapes in place around the paper. And I've got to be careful because I've used some glittery fabrics on here and they are synthetic and not heat resistant so if I iron directly I will just melt those fabrics yeah. I was so, choosing some fabrics like like these ones but I was like I was I found this sequin it's like this really light baby pink sequin one and it was so pretty and I I was like oh it's like a, um, a veil for, on a bride and, and it was really pretty, but then you said I you just melt it. Yeah. So I was, You'd really, melt I was it with the iron. disappointed. So I'm gonna get my paper. Anything in between the iron and the fabric will do. So you can do it with other fabric, but I've got paper here, and I've got my iron on medium, and I'm just gonna press over the top of that. And what that's gonna do is set the fabrics in place around the paper. And that means that I will be able to take the paper out. So this is why we kept our knots and things on top. You can move that out of the way now and turn the light back on if you want to. Okay. What, when am I going to take the red stitches out of this? Well, you can you can do it now if you want to, if you want to iron those. That's cotton, so they will all survive the iron if you want to. I find it so. Yeah. So I because I've got a gap here, because I've got a gap here, I'm going to leave the red, uh, the tacking stitches in these two edge pieces and I'm just going to take them out from over here. But if I snip my knots off on the top, that means that I can unpick these red threads. Really easily. And I'm not rooting about for knots, and I don't have rogue knots that are trapped underneath my fabric, yeah, making it stuck. lumpy and bulky. So that they come out really easily now.
really done with wearing my glasses as well. The problem with my glasses is that the uh, light reflects in them. And <laughs> just end up with really sinister looking eyes. How do I use this lever? How do I spin the lever? Uh, find the switch and press the bottom button. Bottom button. There we go. Ta da! We're back. Magic! <laughs> So I can take out my paper, there we go, and I keep the shape because we've ironed it, it holds its shape. And then we can just sew it onto our backing fabric. So I've got my felt piece here, so all our winging it panels, that, well, all of my winging it panels are, I cut a 10 centimetre square of felt and I mark out a one centimetre border all the way around I think it's three and a half inches I don't have an inch ruler in here um, so it might be three inches what is that I think it's three and a half though um, so I'm just going to position that in place and hold it with a pin I've just centered it on my square I'm hoping that you can just make out my border that I've marked in and so I'm just making sure that's centre, centred there. Holding it in place with a pin. And I'm going to get my thread again. Keep on threading this needle. So do you want to put yours on your felt? Yeah. And basically I'm just going to stitch around the edge with that whip stitch again. And that will hold it in place on the felt. I do whip stitch to the back. So, look, I'll show you. So I've come up from the back through through the, um, it's basically an applique stitch. So if you watch my applique video, I talk about applique stitch, but this is basically how you do it. So you come up on the fabric and you go down just the other side. So I'm sliding my needle down just on the edge of my dress and plate pattern and pulling it through oh because i keep on cutting the wrong side of fabric because <laughs> i wasn't smart enough to put what it, to put this on my fabric right so we won't we won't do that again <laughs> will we? um and you just work your way around the edge and if you're not confident taking all your paper out in a wanna you can stitch it down and leave an edge open where you can get in with your needle so I'll just demonstrate that so um, I haven't taken the paper out of this purple segment here just gonna go around thanks Connie for joining us um, so glad you found us and joined in and look forward to seeing your work if you do any of our other comps so it's been great to have you thanks for joining in and being so lovely hope you have a great sunday um so yeah i'm just working my way around the edge there with my whip stitch applique stitch and i'm just going to go up to the edge of this purple segment i just want to ask for later like in the future when people comment on the comment box below the video i want to know who's having a sunday roast today if you're watching on a sunday <laughs> because if you are i envy you a little bit because sunday roasts are one of my favorite things i never cook them do i hardly ever no. cook them it's like it's a christmas dinner but probably like in the middle of february Or the end it's the end of february tomorrow march on tuesday and it's pancake day on tuesday as well and i am participating in my school pancake day. so ha what does your school do for pancake day so i think oh, it's been ages since i've done it i think you do a race on the playground and you have to flip flip it while you're doing it but then whoever's left like Whoever didn't drop it, 
and the last one can't do this but whoever didn't drop it and i think it's like the first seven people that cross the finish line they have to do a flipping contest at the end and whoever lasts the longest without dropping their pancake or wrap um they win a they like win sweets or something i've never won because i'm also at flipping pancakes but didn't you when you were much younger the first time you did it you didn't really understand that you were supposed to keep flipping your pancake you might not remember this so you just flipped your pancake threw it in the air and ran <laughs> and left the pancake behind on the floor <laughs> you haven't really understood that you weren't supposed to do um, that yeah and then the next year running i think i i was in the top seven so i went down to the flipping competition i flipped it and i dropped it and then picked it up and acted like nothing happened but everybody saw me and started laughing i was like what happened i did everything so you're just cheating basically <laughs> but i didn't know i was cheating no. <laughs> right so i've whip stitched around the edge of this purple segment here and i've taken out my tacking stitches and what i can do now is just fold that back and use my needle to hook the paper and if you just get your needle through the paper and not the fabric this is where i could really do with my glasses my hand keeps on popping and just taking the scissors or putting the scissors back <laughs> there we go so i'm pulling my paper out i just caught it with one of my stitches there um and it will sit nicely on the surface so you can take the paper out as you go along so um basically i'm gonna stitch that down add in my missing segment when i find it somewhere in this room <laughs> where have i put it up a hoover probably no no i had it just before we started and here put the other side of the box just decided to teleport inside a hoover so <laughs> I'm just going to stitch around to stick that down, take out all my tacking stitches and then my little Suffolk buff will go over the middle there and it will cover up all those rough bits in the centre and that will sit there and I might do a bit of over stitching to um, add a little bit of interest so you can stitch down the join lines in between your segments if you want to and um, you could embroider on them with your hexagons you could do embroidered designs in the middle of the hexagons if you're if you're doing hexagons like that so you I can embroider so let's just show one more time so it would help you if you had a pin oh. where's, where have my pins gone then lost that as well <laughs> i'm ready for some sort of mystical vortex in this room what uh <laughs> Right, I so think you'd lose your head if it wasn't attached to your neck. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You've got quite a long piece of thread there. I didn't know how much I'd need. I'm only running out of thread. Yeah, I know, but you're going to get into tangles. Better, better start a new thread than spend half your time on tying knots. It'll get into tangles. Right, so you watching? Yeah. So you're going to come up from the edge like that, just catching your fabric. And then you're going to take your needle down just the outside. Just on the outside. Oh, Karen's joined us. Hello, Karen. I'm glad you found us. What a nightmare it's been. So, Hello. Just <laughs> talking to nobody so, for a little while. Yeah, we were talking to nobody then, but it's fine because people will watch later. So, um, Karen, as you're just joining us, my daughter is with me today. So... Her hands are featuring, but her face is obscured, so, um, because she's only 10. It might have come in by accident when I was going to get the key for no, some stuff on the cupboard. I don't think so. All right, so I've come back up <laughs> on my outer edge, and I'm taking my needle back down through just the felt. So you come up through, come up through both layers and down through one, and you just work your way around. So if you sew down there... Then you can unpick your red thread and take the paper from behind. Okay? Um, Give it a while, see what happens. 
I think I can predict <laughs> what happens. <laughs> if I get so, into a knot and I probably bump my leg up to my ear, covered in spikes. No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so that's where we're heading anyway. So I might do some um, stitches down the joins of my segments of my Dresden plate. So we've been looking at Dresden plate and if you watch back earlier in the video you'll see how I've made my wedges. So we're working on these shapes. I'll just put it over the blue so you can see it better. So we've made some wedges and um, we've used those to form our segments of the Dresden plate. Sewn them all together just so that they fit into our panel square and I'm going to finish the middle with a Suffolk buff, a little tiny one. So this was, this started out, would you believe, as a five centimetre circle um, and when you turn it into a Suffolk buff it obviously pulls in on itself and forms just quite a neat little thing there. So that's going to cover up the middle and I'm going to add some over stitching so it's English paper piecing on our slow stitch panel for February um, and but obviously you can do whatever you want to on your panel how are you Karen everything all right <laughs> I'm so glad you got here in the end I know I've already asked this but Karen are you having Sunday roast <laughs> Zoe's desperate for a Sunday roast that I never cook and um, she's wondering how many people out there are having um, Sunday roasts on Sunday I think she's dropping very unsubtle hints <laughs> we're going to be having a stir fry that's what we're having yeah. for, and we are watching Captain America the first Avenger yeah so that's our plan for this evening Oh, don't worry, Karen. You'll be able to watch it back, so you can um, you can go back to the beginning of the live stream, or you can just watch it back as a video. So, um, but we got here in the end. Yeah, we were plagued with technical difficulties, but we've we've worked it out, and thought rather than me spoiling March by bringing the video forward, and rather than us having to do another recording and upload it I thought we'd just go live anyway and if people found us then that was great and if not it will be there for you to watch back well I mean modern technology doesn't <laughs> even sound that modern but it never works no, it's, it's been a bit of a pain so I'm going to carry on with that I will um, oh look so um, Karen's saying all the cooking is done by her husband Oh, that would be lovely for you, wouldn't lovely. it? No, Daddy does a, a fair amount of cooking, doesn't he? He works hard. He's not bad I in the kitchen. The washing, but that's He's, my specialty. Daddy's particularly good with um, chilli and spag bol, isn't he? He makes a really good chilli. Where'd the um, needle go? Oh, no. I hate that. Oh, oh, oh. Has he got it? Oh, ow! Ow! <laughs> So yeah, Daddy's pretty good in the kitchen. Um, if he does come, does yeah. come with advantages, aka yeah. very good food. Yeah, he's he's Italian, isn't he? So he's particularly yeah. good with Italian food. Um, we we joke, don't we? Because he's got signature moves in his cooking. What does he always yeah. do? Well, he always puts um, paprika. paprika on the when, top. Yeah, and what does he say during what he says? No. Bit of blush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> little bit of blush. Um, when he makes chilli, sometimes he just, he says to you, I already put a little bit of spice in it just to make it a bit zingy. And I'm like, oh, you, you did not put a little bit yeah. of spice in there. He, he likes it spicy, doesn't he? He likes hot chilli. Um, so, what's your name? Karen's asking what your name is. My name is Zoe. 
Okay, this is Zoe. Freak. Yes? Yes. Freak. Do you know what it means? Peace. Love. No, life. <laughs> there <laughs> is no life. love. It means life. Oh, Karen is saying that she eats what she's given and love it all. Oh, that's nice that you get to choose. <laughs> Oh. That is a match made in heaven. So you choose the menu and it gets cooked for you. Very nice. You choose Karen, the menu and Karen's you cook it Karen's saying hello, anyway. look. Can you see the message there? Hello. If only, if only um, the keyboard on a computer or a laptop would be able to spell it right. Because I have two dots on top of my E. Yeah, we can't get the E mark, can we? No. Come on, game show. So there we go. So I'm just working my way around. Um, so if you're joining us late, I've we've gone through the whole process, haven't we? So how yeah. to how to form the shapes, what to do next, how to iron them, how to avoid melting your synthetics. So I've got some of my shiny fabrics in here, and I didn't want to melt them, so I, I used a bit of paper in between the fabrics and the iron. And we're just using a PK stitch to just stitch it down all the way around. And I might overstitch with embroidery. So to make it um, all Yeah, just to make it fit. So it's a bit of a spoiler, but we'll bring them in anyway. So these are my panels from this month. So we've got our Northern, Northern Lights. Lights cold colours panel that we did i think this one's my favorite this month although this one is coming close i'm loving how this is looking so far i like um, the beads that you've got on it and this is i i love english paper piecing because you can use up really tiny scraps of fabric so the, the fabric scraps i've been using have been that sort of size mm. and even smaller also you can do anything you can do squares I, yeah, you can do circles, but yeah, I mean, you sort I don't of know how you, do you sort of want them to tessellate, don't you? So yeah. you want them to all fit together. So like my hexagons. Yeah, so hexagons yeah. are good. Octagons, you also need little squares. So if you have op octagons, they don't fully tessellate. You need a little square. Pentagons. In between, um, I think pentagons would work. Can't visualize Diamonds it now. Work. Diamonds, Diamonds work. work. You can do a sort of um shape that's like um i'm just sketching it out very roughly i yeah. should be using my paper because it won't move you can do a shape that's a little bit like that like a mushroom i don't know what it's called but they fit together quite nicely it looks so like the it um, goes like that it looks like the like uh oh what's it called the the flying uh, spaceship thing in Despicable Me, uh, and oh yeah, it does yeah. Yeah. So you can do that sort of shape. Um, triangles work as well. I think most commonly you see hexagons. You see the hexagon put Rectangles together. Rectangles work, but it's so basic and you can't really yeah. make. You could do a wall. You could do a wall. It would look nice. And then you'd sew like some graffiti or some leaves on it. Yeah, you could do that. So I really like that idea now. Maybe that's something you're going to have to do. You do it and I'll post it on my Instagram feed. So we did uh, Northern Lights. Then we did Hearts. Not a fan of this one. I have to be honest. I didn't like it. <laughs> but I like, I like that one because it goes down. Yeah. I can't call the project Wing in it and then um, edit. Um, uh, sort of edit what I do so I just wing it in as I film and sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't so that one I didn't like this one I didn't like at all until I changed the colour of the birds and now I really like it so I was really happy with that and then that one's going to fit in so that's going to be my February page so Karen I've just noticed your comment I yeah I can do a mini video on that it will just be very short but if I just explain for now i will do a video as well because um people might not watch this live stream but they might watch the video so all i did was cut centimeter strips of felt and you can see i've sort of 
I started one top left and then I butted that one up and worked that way and then I started my new strip here and made it go down there and then I started my new strip here so they sort of interlock like that and I just used a plique stitch to stitch them down and they'll they'll be trimmed a little bit because um, this is too big at the moment for my book so I will trim them off um, and stitch them down so underneath they, they open up you can see underneath is just my raw edges of my fabric um, you might be able to see it better on this one actually um, so I've just trapped them underneath there just to make a little border so that's how I did it um, so I'll, uh, yeah I'll do I'll do a mini video this week so that um, so that you can see how to do that and part two of the book video is coming out very soon um, I filmed it I just need to fiddle about with it a little bit um, and I've been waiting because it uses one of our March stitches so I wanted to wait until that stitch tutorial video had been released before I released part two of the book so that um, so that I didn't give anything away and I wasn't using stitches that we hadn't learned so I'm hoping that you found the March stitches video and they're some of my absolute favourites so we're doing loop stitches so there's blanket stitch in there chain stitch no uh, blanket stitch and we do a blanket stitch wheel as well there's chain stitch and attached chain stitch fly stitch and attached fly stitch and feather stitch so there's quite a number in the March video so um, we, we've got quite a lot more stitches at our disposal and we're gonna have some fun next week so we're gonna use those stitches in quite creative ways um, rather than just making lines we're gonna use them to make shapes so that's as much as I'll say about next week's video and I'm gonna um, be on that as well. yeah so oh yeah we do a lazy daisy as well so <laughs> you just reminded me so that's in there as well just different ways to use chain stitches Don't so use a lazy that's daisy yeah i use them all the time no it's all right just no, it. so um yeah um they they are some of my all-time favorite go-to stitches that i use for everything Lazy so daisy. yeah we use uh chain stitch on this this is our daisy chain hoop kit and um so this is quite quite an intense lazy days there's a lot of detached chain stitches oh, you in that um, so that's that's that one all right so there we go so I've been going for about an hour and a quarter now so Karen I feel really bad because you've just joined us but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna finish there and I will post some pictures of my finished dress and hoop on Instagram and Facebook a little bit later on um, so I'm I hope that's been okay and I hope when you watch back you'll be able to see quite clearly the process of how to do English paper piecing and we'll post some pictures of your Pamela as well um, I'm going to draw my Pamela as well nice so we'll put some pictures of Zoe's panel on Instagram as well so look out for that it might be later today or it might be later on in the week so um, yeah English paper piecing have fun with it it's one of my favourite techniques, really therapeutic. There's Zoe's making its way <laughs> along. I've done so. it all across today. That's very good, yeah. Why so, not um, get my artwork today? Or? No, we're going to finish now. So oh. maybe maybe next month we can, we can do that. Okay, do so happy crafting. I hope you have fun with some English paper piecing. Can't wait to see what everybody comes up with. So it's bye from Zoe. Bye. And I'm going to say goodbye. Have a, re have a really great rest of your day. And we'll see you in the next video next Sunday when we are moving into March and things are going to get a lot more bright and fun. So we're leaving cold colours behind and we're starting something new next week. So I hope you have a great Sunday. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.